Hi guys, welcome to my channel, The Analyst. Today we'll speak about principal component analysis. Basically, principal component analysis is used to reduce the number of dimensions in your data set. Okay. Uh, because whenever you have less number of records in your data set and the number of dimensions are high, what happens is that the model tends to overfit the data. For this example, so through this entire video, what we'll do is that we will pick a data set. Uh, we'll use the crime data set, which basically contains a lot of dimensions, a lot of variables, all right? We'll try to predict crime. And the problem with this data set is that it contains only 47 values, 47 records, okay? Now, what we'll do is that we'll use principal components to basically component analysis to reduce it to a set of principal components which are basically derived variables out of these on top right and then basically we'll fit it to a linear model we'll use that linear model to basically predict the crime however before doing so what we'll need to do is that we'll need to convert those derived variables that is those principal components back into their original variables or attributes okay and then we will check the r squared basically to check how good the model is in prediction so let's jump straight into the demo right same steps i'll clean up my environment and i'll read the data the data set that i'm using is basically the crime data set and i'll attach the link in the description okay from the data then what i'll do is that i'll apply principal component analysis okay for that i'll be using the pr comp library okay you can basically check over your pr comp the pr comp function over here and you could read through now remember that principal component analysis is sensitive to scale okay so we will need to scale the data so while using the PR comp I apply scale equal to true I exclude the 16th column which basically is my crime the output so I want to predict crime okay that's like my target I exclude it and basically I check the summary of basically the object that I generate okay as you can see over here I have a list of principal components from 1 to 15 now each of them have some proportion of variance okay if you add them up they will sum to 1 and now we have to pick only the, those principal components that basically contains majorly all the variances accounted for okay we don't need to pick all of them from pc1 to pc15 now if i plot my data okay i use plot the data and if you see it's kind of like an elbow plot right wherein you have the first six or seven principal components that accounts for majority of the variance so the remaining after six for example can be ignored okay pc7 till pc15 i'll just to check what the eigenvectors are I'll use the biplot function. Okay. The red lines over here basically are the eigenvectors. Okay. This is just so that we can interpret the principal components. Alright. Uh, like I said, the first six accounted for most of the variance. So I'll exclude the rest. Okay. 
I'm just picking up the first six principal components. And now we will try to build a linear model. Okay. For that, I basically have picked up the first six and then I bind the crime data. Okay. Which is basically the crime column which I had excluded at the, excluded at the start. Okay, I convert it to a data frame and then I check okay so this is basically my PC 1 to PC 6 along with my crime column over here which basically I want to predict all right so basically since we're forming a linear model what we'll have to do is form some kind of a linear equation wherein PC 1 to PC 6 are my independent variables and V7 basically is my Y right so the linear equation like y equal to mx plus c and c basically is basically it will have some kind of an intercept that is present okay. so over here I'm using the lm function so that I can fit my linear model I use v7 as my prediction over the rest of the data as independent variables pc1 to pc6 okay for the crime data set crime2 basically Okay, my crime 2 data set consists of this basically is my crime 2 data set okay. I plot the model and from my QQ plot basically I can see that the data is kind of normally distributed okay. to understand more about these plots so uh, in my previous video of linear regressions I've explained them you can go and check that out. Now, basically, I check the structure. STR is something that you can use to check the structure of your object, the model object in this case. Okay, I'll be able to see everything, like what the coefficients are, what the residuals are, and so on. Okay, the object structure is basically what I can see over here when I use the STR function. There's a lot of information that you can see. And when I take a summary of the model that I just fitted, what I can see over here is I have my data, right? My adjusted R square as 0 0.6, p value of 4.8, e to the minus 0. Okay. Now we are forming a linear, we need the linear equation, right? So what I'll do is that from the model, like in the structure itself, what I did was I use structure, right? Structure, 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 structure. Yeah. All right. I see I have the coefficients over here. Okay. From the model object, I'll extract the coefficients. Okay. That's what I'm doing. And the first one basically is the intercept and the rest are the coefficients okay so here these are basically my coefficients so you have an equation like 65.21 pc1 minus 70.08 pc2 plus pc 25 point something pc3 right up to plus the intercept over here which basically on substituting the values of PC1, PC2, PC3, 4, 5, and 6, you will get the crime rate. However, at the start itself, right, principal components are nothing but derived components from your original attributes. Okay. My original attributes are M, SO, AD, K1, K2, LF, right up till time. Okay. So, I'll need to convert this back into my original attributes. Okay, so I'll have my equation in terms of my original attributes that I can then use to predict the crime. So to do so, what I'll do is that I'll multiply the coefficients, coefficients over here by 
the rotation okay and another important step is that I need to unscale like at the start of the video I said that principal components is pretty sensitive to scale and hence we have to scale the data okay so now I'll need to unscale in order to get the original coefficients after I multiply by the the components basically coefficients by the rotation okay if I just check the data over here okay under rotation you will see over here like for each of the variables representation wise of principal component representation okay PC1 PC2 all the variables over here so that going ahead and doing so I multiply by the, the, the rotation by the coefficients and I get basically an scaled version of the original coefficients now I need to unscale it okay so unscaling the data I basically divided by the standard deviation and I get the original coefficients to do so basically alpha divided by the standard deviation and I get the unscaled version okay so yeah now I have my original coefficients in place right now I also need to get my intercept right so to get the intercept which basically is described over here by a0 original okay I use the intercept from my principal component equation basically and I minus it by the sum of the alpha into mean divided by the standard deviation right and here now I have the intercept so now we already have our equation right you have your linear equation in place wherein you have these the coefficients for each of your variables and the intercept now let's see how well basically the model is okay so we'll calculate the R square so for that first we'll calculate the sum of squared errors okay in my previous video too I have this explained all of this you can go and have a look at it sum of square errors and then I'll calculate the sum of totals okay the reason to do so is because you have your your R squares calculated as 1 minus the sum of square errors divided by the sum of square totals and as you can see over here you get an R squared of 0 0.65 which is pretty decent considering that we have very less observations right that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you liked it subscribe please thank you bye bye